irreverent, entertaining, cool. You're listening to LA Talk Radio. You're listening to Razor Riffs with Keith Razor and Alan Lee right here on LA Talk Radio. Hello out there in Radioland. Uh, this is Alan Lee for Razor Riffs and my uh, partner, uh, the one and only Keith Razor, the Razor part of Razor Riffs, is not here tonight. He's at the Brea Improv per- performing his heart out. And uh, good luck to him this evening. Waiting on the line desperately uh, is uh, <laughs> the one and only my guest tonight, fantastic guest, the amazing Ron Lynch, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I've read some things about him uh, just recently. Uh, that you didn't know. <laughs> that I didn't know at all. He is known as one of the four fathers of alternative comedy. Can you believe that? <laughs> And so, as you can hear him, uh, welcome to the show, Senor Lynch. Thank you. Well, that is true. There's only four of us. Yes, yes. And um, including the, that's the audience included, of course. <laughs> but uh, yes, we'll manage to come up with something. I know. So, how are you doing this evening, sir? And uh, so glad to have you. Uh, good. Is this okay? I'm on a speakerphone. Oh, you sound. Does that work? It, it must be high tech. Uh, it sounds wonderful. It sounds just like oh, I good. know. Uh, you sound when I uh, attend your shows. Uh, you know, I was. Uh, I'm, I, I really want to help you plug the Tomorrow Show because uh, I enjoy it so much. And uh, you've said that N- Nana the Cat will be returning. If I'm yes. correct, good. And uh, yeah, she's there this Saturday, actually. Oh my! Why are you getting me excited? Because uh, it's BYOB, and this is an amazing thing that uh, he makes the announcement for a show on Saturday at midnight, ladies and gentlemen, at the Steve Allen Theater. And uh, since Nana the Cat is going to be there, I'm going to be very careful that I just bring half of the BYOB with me. Uh, <laughs> Which would be BY? BY, just by. Oh, jeez. That's, that's perfect for Nana the Cat Woman. Um, yeah, so you bring you. <laughs> just, just me. Um, so, um, anyway, Ron, I, I, I heard you were a single man. Did I get that right? Uh, that is incorrect. Oh, I'm sorry. No, then. That's simply, a, that's simply an affront. Oh, oh, I'm sorry about that, because uh, I am a single man, and uh, I, uh, I'm i still dating myself. Uh, it's a lot of fun uh, out there dating yes. myself, taking myself out uh, here and there. So, uh, this is the Pat question. I, I thought I wouldn't ask you that, but here I go. Um how did you get started in comedy? Gee, that's uh, an amazing question. <laughs> well, it's always uh, that type of question is always weird because people like kind of ramp up to uh, what they're going to do in comedy. I think sure, um, and people, you know, there's also the sad story of people saying, "Well, I was running around my friends, and that's how I started doing it." <laughs> <laughs> um, but then it winds up his, their friends were just being kind. Yeah, that's but, um, <laughs> uh, you know, you started in high school just making goofy tapes and stuff that, of course, if I listen to now, I would think were the stupidest things ever. <laughs> uh, and then uh, in college, it was hard to get a radio show. I was upstate New York, Binghamton, New York, and the best way to get one would be pairing up with somebody, and I paired up with a friend of mine from, from uh, Long Island that I went to high school with. And we did a show together. We started doing sketches. And then the craziest thing is we did a live show of our sketches in one of the dorms. And it was two hours long, which is insane. Uh, It was two hours of sketches and stuff and just goofing around. And everyone stayed there because there was really nothing else to do, I guess. But um, That's a long, long time. That started getting, that's the start of the bug that I got. Oh, great, great. And uh, it was two. Then, then the two of us were in a comedy team for uh, probably eight years after that. Wow, eight years. Fantastic. Yeah, this is back when there were more comedy teams or duos. Um, and a lot of people would start out in a comedy team just to, you know, feel comfortable on stage because it was always the other guy. Um, and then they would break up after a while. <clears throat> so these teams, but, yeah. these teams could be like a tag team. Like in wrestling, 
They would just no, no, no. Not would, quite like the that. Two of you would be. <laughs> no, you would be performing together. You're doing sketches and sure, um, and talking together and stuff. Yeah. And this was so, like long form because you you said it was a two hour show. I thought it was interesting that you brought that up for the audience out there. Well, it's funny you're talking in improv terms, but this is this was just sketches that we used to do on the radio. Ah, and we did them live. Oh. Um, and um, there was no improv really involved except in between things and us talking. Mm-hmm. Um, but th- there was no improv in the sense that we got suggestions from the audience or anything, no. No, that's true. Uh, it'd be a little hard on a radio show, I guess, uh, to open it up to that type of... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you do improvise when you're doing a radio show. Sure. Um, but yeah, that, our performance was never improvised, really. Yeah, yeah. Except, you know, you have a framework. Sometimes you have a framework for something you're going to do, and uh, you simply become those characters and use that framework to get from A to B or to C, and um, you end the sketch that way, you know. Yeah, and and there's characters and voices uh, that you do and have done uh, on on a number of shows. Uh, Bob's Burgers, Adventure Time, Dr. Katz. Tim and Eric, home movies, uh, and animation uh-huh. stuff, animation voices you've done. Oh, yeah, I love it. That's uh, the best gig ever. It's really fun. And most of those uh, cartoons, I'm um, recording with people that I either know pretty well or I really like. And, um, it's always fun to do it. Uh, I just recently did, did a, a voice on a cartoon called Star and the, oh, boy, Star... And the forces of evil. It's a new Disney um, uh, kids cartoon, and it was just me in the booth, and I didn't know anybody there, so it was really interesting. Not not being that comfortable doing it, but it was really fun. So you went in um, and did this. That, that sounds that sounds wonderful. Uh, it's a Disney uh, uh, feature. Uh, it's not a feature. It's a uh, it's a cartoon that's on their channel. I think. <laughs> I don't really know. I know it's a, I know it's a Disney produced uh, cartoon, kids cartoon. It's Star- not a movie. Wow, that sounds like a, it, that the whole comic book thing is taken off. Star Star Boy and the what evil? Uh, the voice it's just Star Star versus the forces of evil. I think it's called oh. it's something like that. Whoever whoever wrote it is going to kill me, but. Um, it's basically the star. It's a really absurd cartoon in a way because it's about a wand that um, produces uh, spells that fights off evil. <laughs> and um, this one cartoon I did was a a change from the normal cartoon in, in that they went inside the wand <laughs> to meet the characters inside the wand that caused the spells. And I played a. Uh, <laughs> I played a narwhal, um, like a kind of like a sailor narwhal character, who his 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 power was narwhal blast, and he could run himself into other characters, <laughs> which didn't make sense to me because a narwhal has that big pointy thing on the front. He would probably be killing them immediately. That could hurt. That could hurt. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, pain is an interesting thing in cartoons. Um, but it was a magic wand, you say, and uh, talking about magic, I know uh, you have some background in that as well, and I uh, have seen some of your magic. Uh, <laughs> it's I like it. It's very good. And uh, Now, are, are you part of the uh, uh, the magic world, uh, the magician uh, world? Uh, no, not really. I mean, um, I, I do kind of a parody of magic, and there's only really a couple of real magic things involved. And it's all, um, I don't know how to describe it. It's really just making fun of magic. And the funny thing is, I had the opportunity of performing at the Magic Castle, uh-huh. which usually doesn't ap- appreciate that kind of comedy <laughs> magic. They like, if it's comedy magic, they like real magic involved. And um, my stuff was just making fun of that, really. But I had the opportunity of performing in the big room at the Magic Castle for a week, and that was like one of the highlights of my career. Oh, that's fantastic! You know, I've uh, I've been to, there twice, uh, and now it's like a private invite and all this, and uh, quite a buffet. I remember they they really served a, a, a you know 
quite a scrumptious and uh, grandiose uh, uh, buffet. It was amazing. And uh, the food oh, the buffet, was, you, you're talking about Sunday. Sunday. It was right? a Sunday. Yes, sir. It was indeed. Yeah, the breakfast buffet on Sunday <clears throat> is insane there. Oh, um, man. Uh, yeah, you know you're. So- and I, I lucked out because a magician who is a great magician who works there knows me, and he does my show on Saturday sometimes. And um, he asked me to do this show with him and help write the show, and it was pretty fun. Oh, three of us: uh, John Carney, uh, Rob Zabrecki, and I played three ghosts of the castle. This is around Halloween time. <laughs> And uh, we had, like, uh, ghost outfits in the beginning, and we played music together, and then we had a slideshow where you find out we all died on the Hindenburg. It was really fun. Really fun show. Oh, that sounds funny. Death on the Hindenburg as a ghost. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my, you could transfer that over to the Queen Mary. and. Uh, oh, yeah, right. Oh, I love the Queen Mary. You know what? I haven't been over there, and someone mentioned ghosts. They have this whole ghost thing there, and that's why... I uh, mentioned that, and uh, you you know, uh, did you get on H- uh, Howard Hughes's um, uh, the Spruce Goose when it was parked over there uh, some time ago? No, I didn't. I remember that. Yeah, no, I didn't get to see it. Yeah, that that's incredible, and uh, that whole era is incredible, and uh, it's the whole Houdini um, uh, history of magic uh, in the United States is uh, all uh, all tied into that, the ghosts and uh, seances and all uh, that, and. Uh, uh-huh. Oh, by the yeah, way, yeah, they have some interesting tours and stuff on that boat, and um, I've stayed in the room, a room there, a couple of times, and it's just great. It's really fun. No ghosts. No ghosts. Didn't see any ghosts. Yeah, see that. I want to see a ghost. Or maybe I did. <laughs> uh, well, you know, it's it's funny um, talking about uh, about about ghosts and. Uh, I listened to that late night. What's is it? Nuri, the guy that talks about aliens. Uh, late night, uh, George, George Nuri. Uh, I do not know. Oh, oh, really? It it it's uh, it comes on like eleven o'clock on I think it's AM radio. Anyway, he has all the people come on and talk about aliens. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I know what you mean. <laughs> and I didn't know he was radio, but yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, and. Uh, uh, I always find it funny because I, I, I just have always had a hard time believing. I mean, I love science fiction and so forth, but uh, the extraterrestrial thing always was, you know, it just pushed me just a bit. And uh, But I can't wait to meet one. And uh, who knows? They, they may be doing comedy, and we don't even know it. <laughs> but uh, 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 uh. <laughs> uh, So anyway, um, I, I was going to ask you um, – you uh, you have some run-ins with Louis Louis C.K. He's a friend of yours. Any 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 uh, little uh, anecdotes uh, about Louis C.K. or uh, anyone else for that? I know you I know you know Mark Mark Marin, who I, I uh, have met, and um, well, you yeah, know Mark and I have I've known Mark for a while. I don't really I don't really see much of him anymore. I haven't seen him since I did his show. I think a long time ago. Ah. Um, uh, we're, at, we're I think we're two extremes of the comedy world in a way. Um, but Mark was in Boston with me when we started out. And um, as far as Louis goes, uh, yeah, I've I've known Louis forever, and I, I gave him theoretically gave him his first uh, gig doing stand up, but he actually had done it six months earlier and gave up. Really. And then decided to come back into it. And I was running a little club in Cambridge, in Central Square in Cambridge, Massachusetts. And um, it was a, the space was a an, a little movie theater that had tables and chairs, little round tables and chairs. And they would serve coffee and cake and stuff. And they would show the weirdest movies. And um, I saw the guy at a party one night and talked to him, talked to him into doing a midnight show on a Saturday, which is what I'm doing now. But he did a midnight show called Comedy Clubhouse. And uh, Louie came up to me after a show, and he said, uh, Hi, I'd like to perform on this show. How do I do that? And I said, Well, if you can get me a tape of you performing or something, um, just to show me what, what you what you have and what you do, yeah. um, and we'll think about it. So he, the next week, he comes back, he gives me a cassette tape, and I listen to it. And when I listen to it, I hear, um, I wish I had two glasses with me right now, but I hear the glasses constantly clinking, um, him doing jokes with a lot of echo, 
and I uh, hear like four laughs that are like overdubbed, and I can kind of tell that happened. It's like ah, <laughs> like really big, ridiculous laughs for every sure, joke. Sure. And he's obviously trying to make me think he was in a comedy club. Like he produced a tape of his jokes because he had no tape of him being in a comedy club. Oh, that's he just made it up. And he's still a producer, producer to this day, but he gave me the tape. And he came back the next week and he said, did you listen to the tape? And I said, yeah, did you expect me to think you were in a comedy club? <laughs> and his face kind of drops. And he went, yeah. I went, all right, you're on third. <laughs> and it was basically that. Because well, uh, it wasn't, it was, you know, it was a crappy little club. It was, no, there was no pressure or anything. Sure. I think if the tape was bad, I still would have put him up. Sure, that's funny. Um, anybody that goes to trouble to try to get a gig, you know? <laughs> And I, I have a I have a show every now and then on my show, which is just five minutes, and that's the show that I put people on that um, really want to do the show or they want to do the show for the first time or whatever, and they can't do more than five minutes because the mic and the lights go out <laughs> immediately in five, five minutes, <laughs> which is actually a pretty fun show. It's actually really fun. Well, it sounds like a great show. Because comics try to go right up to the light. They try to go right up to the thing being shut off. And yeah. if it goes off before their last punchline, it's really tragic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Because they be don't, laughing at that, but it is funny. It is funny. Uh, 30 seconds, and they over Tokyo. They say, no, we're going to go all the way to the end and beyond, and bam, uh, the light. They, uh, it goes off. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, so I've known Louis ever since then. We made a couple of short movies together, and... Um, He's let me stay at his apartment in New York, which is insane. He just, you know, he sold his own tickets online for a, not for a live concert. He sold um, a one-hour special that he made at a theater, put it online for five bucks uh, without any, no middleman at all. And he made, like, overnight, he made a million dollars. Wow. That's a very simplistic way of describing the story, but um, he made a ton of money. Wow. It was really smart. He's a super smart guy. No, I, I get that. And he wanted, he bought he bought a brownstone building in New York City. Nice, which is unheard of. That is nice. A brownstone is uh, a couple of shekels there involved. Uh, yes. <laughs> you know, it's funny. You just said that uh, he did that virtual uh, uh, comedy club with you, and you caught him. And then it's funny he kind of does it again online and sells tickets for not it, I mean it's a real comedy but it's sort of like a, a concept there you know he he tried it with you and you guessed that it you know he wasn't in the club and then he says well I'll do it again online and sell tickets and I'll be you know the audience will see me and I'll be online it's kind of like a virtual you know here I am again <laughs> right and of course this is eons later oh, and it's a real show that he sees something selling so it's yeah. It's similar, but it's definitely not the same thing. Yeah, it's a little bit different. I <laughs> see what you're saying. No, yeah, I know. You didn't make a million dollars on the first one, and you caught him. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, you know what? Th- uh, thinking along those lines, uh, do you have any plans to uh, record tape, uh, uh, stand-up, or uh, or actually uh, your, any of your shows? Uh, I think. Well, I think the show is going to go live. Not live, but I think we're going to maybe uh, put stuff up online this year. Oh, wow. Because we have a lot of tape. We've recorded a lot of stuff. We were thinking of putting uh, cameras into the theater, uh, but the theater's not into it that much, so we may not do that. Uh, but we have a lot of uh, a lot of tape of the shows. But I and I probably am going to make a CD this year, but it's not going to be of my act. It'll be a separate CD because my act... Um, I think if you just recorded it, you wouldn't understand 90% of it because it's um, <laughs> it's a lot of visual stuff, you know? It and, is, it uh, is. The magic thing would be absurd. <laughs> on, it would be a little hard. just a CD. <laughs> um, so that's, maybe that's what I should do is a whole CD of uh, silent magic. <laughs> the silent People magic. just laughing and floating. That's that that would be a, a first. I, I, um, the real Houdini seance uh, uh, CD uh, with a silent uh, magic. Uh, <laughs> right. And the uh, magic would be getting people to pay for it. <laughs> that, that's always <laughs> always a little magic involved there. <laughs> yes. Um, man, uh, I tell you, it's crazy. I you know I want to talk uh, about uh, 
a little bit about the Tomorrow Show again. Um, you know, there was a, I went to one and you had a fella who, who uh, said that he had been involved at CBS as a, as a uh, an executive. And uh, you know, we stood up on the stage over there. I think it's before one of your, the bits. Uh, I don't want to no spoilers with the shoes. And uh, he was funny. And then you had the, a guy who, who uh, had an East European accent, and he was a magician. And he ended up one night being tied tied to a chair because he promised that uh, he would be able to uh, to uh, uh, escape artists his way out of the chair. And he was tied up and gagged and taped. And you gave the audience, uh, you know, we gave him some time, and you uh, gave us a count. And, uh, you know, we gave him more time and so forth. And <laughs> do you think you'll have this magician back again, uh, if you remember who I'm talking about? <laughs> uh, well, the funny thing is I've done so many shows. That must have been a long time ago, and I don't remember it. <laughs> oh, it, it, uh, it doesn't. Okay. I really don't remember that, oh, I think I would remember that. Oh, sorry about and that. And you sure it was my show, right? Yes, yes. I remember it was midnight, and I was sober. And... <laughs> And uh, uh, it was hilarious because he, you know, obviously he was having a hard time getting out of the chair, and we all counted uh, from one to a hundred. And then you said, "Well, we have another chance to count down again uh, from ninety nine down." And of course, uh, you know, you said, "Well, you will get back to you." And the show went on, and uh, he continued to struggle in the background. Yeah, I'm sorry, you don't remember. Yes, that. yes, I do remember do, that. Do you? Do you? Obviously, it was a joke. <laughs> <laughs> it was definitely. And I think the uh, either convincing the, one apparently for you. It, it was, it was, it was. And the funny thing I found uh, uh, was that uh, it was either the cat lady or uh, another lady, a scantily clad, uh, that walked in front of him, and he completely stopped struggling and uh, started uh, staring at her, uh, 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 her rear end. And he just uh, to heck with the uh, the whole escape artist thing. Uh, I've got better things to watch. So he was still tied up by, at the end of the show. By the way. If you remember that. Right. Oh, sure. Of course. <laughs> yeah, I do remember that. I can't remember who that was. Oh. I, mean, I think it was me at one of, you know, with one of our regular performers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We have like a regular cast of idiots that do stuff. Ah, because I know I've seen, uh, you know, uh, people come back and uh, that's so I've always liked that. I've always liked a troupe that you, you can, you know, come back and see again uh, in various incarnations. Uh you know, you must be quite a night owl uh, to have that show at that time of the evening, and I like it. I personally like, uh, you know, knowing that I don't have to be uh, be there until midnight. And uh, right, you know, it's, it gives a person a lot to do between then and <laughs> then and midnight on Saturday. <laughs> I have to pace myself. I mean, I have to stay up late Friday night to try to pace myself for that Saturday a little bit. But um, oh, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't mind it at all. I think over the last over the ten years of the show, I think I've been really tired oh, five or six oh. times. Yeah, you look. Uh, look where you I remember like... just thinking, I really don't want to be here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there are a couple of. Nights. But you know what? The show must go on as always. That's the uh, the showbiz uh, faithful uh, biblical. Yes, uh, uh, the whole. <laughs> It's you a fun show, though. You know, oh, I enjoy doing the show, and it's a I don't really perform on the show. I, I just host the show and enjoy it myself, really. I, I consider um, that a performance in of itself. But uh, it's have a, you ever seen uh, the crapshoot show we do? Uh, that I don't recall myself. Not not that title. Is that well? It's a show that actually came about when Thursday night I still hadn't booked anybody because I was busy, oh, I and. Um, I just told the guy that makes the posters for me, Steve Robles. I said, "Look, why don't you uh, let's do this? Just write crapshoot surprise. Will be, everybody will be surprised, and I'll get this booked by Saturday because we had to get promotional out, stuff out." Yeah, yeah. And it ought to be called crapshoot, and it was one of the most popular shows, and it still is. I love it because everything that's going to happen on the show goes into a hat on a slip of paper. Okay, and so it's half acts. Half of the things, you know, describe what act is going to come up, and half of the slips of paper are other things, like um, some of them say audience talents, uh, and then we have an announcer in the back describing what that means. I say, okay, what does that mean, Bill? And they go, uh, that means that person has to perform some kind of talent, or they'll say, that person has to pick somebody else in the audience to <laughs> do a talent. Like, that that variation can happen. So and there's also prizes. We get about crappy prizes, things I basically want to get rid of. Um <laughs> Uh, let's see, prizes, and um, 
and just happenings, weird things. Like we say nothing will happen but 30 seconds, and if something happens, we're going to start counting over again. <laughs> Which, of course, begs people yelling stuff out or sure. interrupting the 30 seconds of silence, you know? Sure, sure. But it's a crazy show, and I get, I, I'm, I'm in the audience the whole time with a microphone. The audience pulls a slip out, and they read the slip of paper. <laughs> so the audience does all the hosting, basically. Oh, that's great. Uh, it's pretty fun. That sounds hilarious. I got to, I got to, I got to go to one of those. Uh, uh, We're doing it on the thirtieth. Ah, the thirtieth. Very good. So, well, everyone out yeah. there, uh, and that is at the Steve Allen Theater, uh, right? It's at the Steve Allen Theater, yeah, in the CFI building. CFI building, uh, right on Hollywood Boulevard. Is it Vermont? Down by, I mean, not Vermont. Near Vermont. It's two near. blocks short of Vermont. It's it's near the Frank Lloyd. Yeah, yeah. I always say it's it's caddy corner to the Frank Lloyd Wright, uh, the house there in the park. That The Frank Lloyd Wright house? Right, the Barnes, Barnstall Park. The yeah. Barnstall Park, yeah. It's across the street from uh, Barnstall Park. Yeah, yeah. That's where it is, folks. Uh, and they're great shows. Um, it's funny. There was a, 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 a mic that... Uh, a lady had on Sunset at Charlie Chaplin's house. And you probably know this, uh, where it is. Uh-huh. I, I didn't. Uh, it's Caddy Corner to the uh, Chateau Marmont Hotel. Did you, did you know that, Ron? Because I, I think you must be a Charlie Chaplin uh, fan. Um, um, I've heard of this, but I've never seen it. I never actually went there and pointed it out to myself. Ah, yeah. It's, it's uh, like I said, it's across the street uh, from the Chateau Marmont, you know, the the famous, uh, they have ghosts. And on sunset. Yes, sir. On sunset, as you cross uh, North Crescent Heights, and uh, just uh, as you get toward the Mar- uh, the uh, Chateau Marmont Hotel, uh, it's right there, and it goes by the name, uh, some French name called the Van Cluys House, which is some reference, uh, huh. which alludes me uh, to Charlie Chaplin, but that that is where he lived, and uh, uh, it's uh, it's a historical uh, uh, place. And uh, I hope they don't tear it. No, they wouldn't dare tear that down. Uh, they're always tearing things down in Los Angeles. It irks me. Uh, they have to. There's not <laughs> enough things. There's not enough floors or whatever the building is. That's good point. They must have more than more than five floors, otherwise the building goes. That's true. And because they don't want us to see that the wonderful Hollywood Hills anymore, and uh, the Hollywood sign, you have to get a. Uh, uh, an apartment, uh, a high rise, uh, five, like you said, at least five floors, uh, in order to see the Hollywood sign. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh my, I don't know what to do about this. Yeah, place. it's it's weird. I live on Bronson, and it's like right up the block from me. And, oh, um, cool, Bronson. That's a great street. It's a pretty cool area. It's mm-hmm. right around the corner from uh, the UCB theater. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's and, a, um, a great area. I thought of moving a few times, and it's just, like, such a great location. Oh, that's fantastic. You can even go across the street. To it was the... in the parking lot of Gelson's there. It mm-hmm. was uh, the Mayfair at the time, and I'm sitting on the wall waiting for a friend of mine to pick me up. And this car stops in front of me, pulls into the driveway of the supermarket. People get out of the car and started taking pictures of me. Oh. And I went, how could they possibly know anything about me, and why are they taking pictures of me? <laughs> And of course, what they're doing is they're taking pictures of the Hollywood sign, which is right above my head. <laughs> <laughs> and that was when I thought, well, maybe I do have an ego. I must be an idiot. <laughs> oh, showbiz. No, uh, they might, you know, I, they might very, very well have been uh, taking a picture of you uh, in, with the Hollywood sign, you know, as, as a, a local. As a, That's what they were doing. You know. You yes. Know, you never know. Thank you, Alan. You're welcome. <laughs> I don't know why I, I wrote this silly thing. I say, are there aliens or alien comedians hiding here on Earth? I, I'm just throwing that out as who knows. <laughs> what does that mean? That's what I'm trying to figure out. I don't know why I brought it up. I thought you'd help me out in an improv or something, but forget it. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit I'll manage to develop. I think. Everything I'm going to say no. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good answer. That's a good answer. Um, well, um, what, else, what else was going to have you... Uh, interrogate you more um talking about uh, uh are there any parts of, of the uh, of the city that um uh, that you like and could talk about uh uh as far as like a, a link to comedy like for example uh the bat cave you know the bat cave is near near where you live the oh area, yeah it's the, up the block of, on Bronson in the park up there yeah, yeah. it's up on uh, it's up on uh uh, Canyon, 
a canyon road. What was it called? Canyon something over the road. Yes. Right he, parallel to me. Oh, th- th- uh, that's what I'm talking yeah. about. Yeah. Um, it looks pretty cool. I haven't been up there in years. It's mm. so funny. I used to go up there a lot, and I haven't been up there in a long time. Well, you know what? Uh, it's all nostalgia, and I don't, I don't blame you. You're, you know, you're a busy man. Why would you be looking for the bad cave? And uh, I just brought that up as a, a, a historical point of interest uh, that you happen to live by. Pretty the, cool. It's I mean, very. I, cool. I think if I had people visiting more, I would probably wind up up there. I think Griffith Observatory is always a target for me to bring people. Oh, that's a great. Because you can see the whole city, and it's pretty cool. That is gorgeous. You know, I, I am I am a, a Los Angeles aficionado. I love this city. Um, I have uh, relatives that live in New York City, and I don't mind visiting New York. But you're from back east, aren't you, originally? Yeah, I'm from New York. I was born in Queens, grew up on uh, Long Island. Ah. And went to, went to college in upstate New York. We're, yes, very good. So you, do you like this climate? Uh, you, I mean, you've, you've obviously uh, grown accustomed to becoming an Angelino. Did you, do you miss New well, York? Well, I've, I've slowly moved to a warmer place. <laughs> um, well, not except when I went from upstate New York yeah. to Boston, mm-hmm. and Boston was pretty cold. Mm-hmm. Went back to Manhattan for a while, then went to San Francisco, which in my mind was California, you're going to be really warm. But I lived out in the Richmond district, and it was near the ocean. It was always really cool. And I remember one day it being 80 degrees, and I said to my roommate, yeah, 80 degrees, California weather. And he said, you're not going to see another 80 degree weather day for five years at least. <laughs> and he was right. It was never it was never that hot again. It was just weird. Yeah. If you're out towards the ocean there, you can look down, you can look down like one of the main streets and you can see the sun in San Francisco, like downtown, you could see the sun shining down there, but where you were, it was overcast all the time. Uh, great city. I mean, I had to leave that city because things weren't happening there. And um, I kept traveling on the five from San Francisco to L.A. to come down here and uh, audition, do shows. Sure, sure. You can only make that trip so many times before you go, all right, I'm going to move. Yeah, no, it's it's quite a it's quite a haul. It's quite a drive, and uh, yeah, just, and not that interesting. You know, it's funny. Uh, that's exactly what my sister said. She came out to visit. And she says, "Oh, we're going to take." I've never taken that drive, and she said, "Oh, I don't know what all the hullabaloo is about this." And I said, "What do you mean? Uh, there's a I don't know, Hearst Castle and all of that. Oh, we didn't stop for that. Uh, what is the Winchester uh, House and all of this?" And I said, "God, that's a I'd stop at all those things and maybe say hello to Clint Eastwood or something." Up there, in, uh, uh, well, maybe it's a little off the beaten path there. Well, the one is the one is great. Yes, the one, traveling down the one is great. It takes for heavy going from San Francisco to L.A. That'd be crazy, but um, it also would be very scenic. Um, yeah, the one is great, uh, but the five not so great. You know, it's the fastest way. Oh, um, if you want to do a lot of thinking, it's probably a great drive. <laughs> uh, but- not to be alone with yourself for five hours. Oh, we all have been there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> in the car, sometimes out of the car, in your apartment. But um, uh, do you, are there, are, you know, I was going to, this isn't a pat question, so I, I like talking just like we're talking like this. Uh, here's a pat question for you. What makes you laugh today, and who were some of your comedic influences growing up? That's one of those magazine things. Wow. Well, you know, that's that. I don't know. It's a tough question for me anyway, yeah. asking, was it who makes me laugh or what makes me laugh? Those are two different things, I think. But, yeah. Um, I think the, I think what makes me laugh now, because I've seen so much comedy, is um, something that's really different, mm-hmm. something that's really kind of weird. Sure. You know? Sure. Um but weird in the sense that it's not for the sake of being weird. It's, it's just really creative and something really uh, different to me. So in other words, it surprises me. It surprises me and makes me laugh. I mean, that's one of the one of the uh, you know stalwarts of uh, comedy is is surprise. Um, and I saw I, I saw the show the other night, and I rarely sit in the audience. I have a hard time watching a comedy show. I mean, torture to me is sitting. <laughs> in the first two rows of a stand-up show. Oh. Because, I think because I've seen so much of it, sure. I'm, I, I have a hard time being that person. 
Sure. I have to be in the back of the room. But you'll find that, I think, about most most comics. Um, but uh, I saw a show, and a lot of the guys are on my show Saturday. Yeah. It's this guy, Matthew Silver, and uh, this guy, Special Head. Yeah. Um, and they're all uh, weird and funny. I mean, it's it's just, you go, wow. I mean, you, you, you it's definitely in a form that you have not seen before. And it's definitely going to surprise you what they do, because I have no idea what they're going to do in a sense. Uh, speaking of magic, Special Head does a bunch of magic stuff. Yeah. And he he acts kind of philosophical on stage and very Zen-like <laughs> and um, makes these weird things happen. Um, and they're pretty great. Levitating feathers, he levitates himself. <laughs> um he was on uh, America's Got Talent, too, actually. Oh. Um, I think both of them were, somehow. I don't know how that would happen. But, um, and he did a thing where Howard Stern was just making fun of him constantly. <laughs> he said, all right, well, do, do what you're going to do. And he took this stick, and he just held the stick down, and then proceeded to just raise his legs into a low oh. position in midair. <laughs> um, it was pretty crazy, and the crowd went bananas. Well, that's funny. Uh, pretty great. Anyway, he's on the show Saturday. Um, that show is just super weird and pretty great. And um, I had these guys booked for Saturday as well, so I'm looking forward to it. Oh, that sounds great. I'm going to try to. I'm going to. But try yeah, to... they. And it's not necessarily laughing either. I mean, it's it's like wow, you know, what the f? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, 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 it's just, holy mackerel. <laughs> um, but. Uh, a good sketch will make me laugh. A good, a good sketch and, and really good, good actors. You know, good, good comedy actors are great. You know, and there's I, a lot of them in this town. A lot, a lot. A lot. I, yeah. Uh, the whole uh, comedy scene. Uh, it, it, you know, it's building to. I think there's going to be a, a just that is what's going to be. Uh, I don't want to say dominant, but uh, it's going to be quite a tourist attraction in this town to have uh, a legendary. Uh, Troops, uh, just like when you started, you know, how you said you did that two hour sketch. Um, that should, I want that to come back, and it, I, it is coming back. I'm, you know, it is coming back. Uh, you, I guess, the what, the UCB? Uh, well, sure, UCB, Groundlings have sketch Groundlings shows. has sketch shows. Um, everyone thinks they're just pure improv, but no, they do, they have sketch shows. And, um, though I'm saying that, and I've, in the, I don't know how many years I've been here. I think I've been to the Grand Links uh, Theater twice because people I knew were in the show. Um, I'm not drawn to that, I guess. As far as as uh, improv uh, shows that are um, or sketch, not sure. one was like um, they have a graduation show after people take. Um, I oh, think yeah. it's a sketch show, sketch writing yeah. uh, workshops and stuff, and actors. I mean, they're all actors who wrote the sketches and they're in the sketches. And uh, I can't think of her name, but she was in this graduation show that a friend of mine was in. And uh, Nadine Pearsoff, Pierce, mm. she's on. Uh, she was on Saturday Night Live first. Okay, oh. I'm slipping on my own foot. No, um, no, no. Do you know what I'm talking about? Uh, you know what I don't. Um, but anyway, she went on to go on to Saturday Night Live within six months of that show. You know, so oh, and uh, I think. Links is a great training ground. I think people do look for actors there. Um, and UCB, UCB is great now. Yes, yes, it's it's a it's a it's a standalone. Uh, it's it's doing very well. Uh, in fact, it, I read that their their classes are so full that there's like this waiting list uh, of yeah. people that yeah. uh, you know we've talked yeah. about. Uh, you mentioned earlier about how some people start out uh, making a couple of jokes at at their job. And then sure. they realize uh, it's a little bit different <laughs> after class and before class. Uh. Uh. <laughs> but uh, that is what it is. And, uh, yeah, man. Um, any thoughts on Houdini? That uh, I, I'm not, on, not, on Houdini. I know, I know you didn't know him personally. <laughs> but... Um, um. Houdini, um, phenomenal. I mean, I, I he's, he's a um, he's, he's bigger than life. The guy was insanely bigger than life. Totally. Um, and uh, yeah, and he did. You know, he did like a serial, a silent 
film serial where he was like the hero. I do know that. And he, he would, he would, it would be just like cliffhangers where he would be trapped in something, and it looked like he was going to die. And then the the next the, the next episode of the serial, he would get out of the thing. Yes. And um, he he wanted to act, so he talked people into making this serial about him being this hero. Um, and I know all this because I showed a couple at my show once, and this guy, Michael Mortilla, who's a great piano player, and he plays professionally for um, silent movies and everything. In fact, he, on Sunday, what, was he Michael at the New Mortilla Year's show? was playing... What's that? Uh, was he at the New Year's show? The yeah, film? he was playing piano for the New oh, Year's he's, show. Oh, he's yeah. fantastic. Yes, go yeah, on. he's great. Go he on, you, you were saying that he... Uh, I've seen him sit down for a like one hour long silent movie that he told me he has never seen before, and he'll com- he'll compose music as he's watching the thing. Oh. And you know, with silent movies, you you tend to have like a theme. You theme a character. You play to something else. But he created a whole soundtrack to that movie in that hour on the spot. On the spot, which is insane to me. But he's that good. And what he's doing Sunday uh, Sunday at LACMA, he is playing for nine hours straight. Oh, my. Um, he's That's... playing for five movies. Uh, I think they're all, they're all silent movies. And he's just playing in a space at LACMA for nine hours for these five movies. Wow. And um, he gets, obviously, he must get breaks. He gets, like, ten-minute breaks. But, um Yeah. That's crazy. He's trying to get the Guinness World Book of Records, too, well, in spite I... of that. I mean, that's not why he's doing it. It's really an art installation type of thing. I, I would but, think, um, yeah, my God. Definitely go into that. You're, you're going to be at that, right? I'm going to go to that at some point, yeah. Yeah, that sounds fantastic. Uh, uh, many years ago, it must have been 10 years ago, I saw, it might have been him, uh, they were uh, uh, doing one of those big refurbishing uh, historical things with one of the theaters downtown. I forget the name of the theater. One of those were very ornate, Baroque. Uh, sure. Yeah, the, um, the last seat standing or last. Yeah. What was it called? So, yeah, and you know all all the uh, you know the uh, glitzy uh, wealthy people there. And I like I you know again I want to save these buildings. I, I I'm all for that. And they did Phantom of the Opera, and uh, they announced that the that the piano player would be doing just just that, playing through the whole. Uh, Phantom of the Opera, and uh, I was amazed at that uh, because you know when when that sound hits you right there, uh, especially if you're seated close to the orchestra, and it doesn't really matter. It it it's you get the orchestration and the sound and the syn- you know it's all synchronized. Uh, it, it it's a mind blower. You know, it's pretty exciting. It's pretty exciting. I mean, I, I became totally hooked on silent movies about oh I don't know. It was before I moved here in San Francisco. Yeah, and Michael Mortelli was playing piano at the time at this festival, but it's a silent movie festival, the San Francisco Silent Movie Festival that happens every year in like June or July. Yeah, and yeah. Um, they have they started out with like a day and a half, and now they're up to like four days of silent movies um, with I think about six or seven different kinds of uh, accompaniment. Uh, oh, there's wow. a piano player. There's another piano player who plays piano and flute and trumpet while he's playing piano like to play with his left hand um, he's amazing and there's like small there's a small ensemble from uh, Sweden I think that plays anyway nice. it's just great and people go ah silent movies but oh. um, the, silent, the acting is great it's not over the top like you would expect no no it's not and no it's not and the music is great it's live music yeah. it's everything has live music to it I mean it's it's like uh, it you could call it a silent happening because <laughs> uh, it is yeah. it's, it's, yeah, it's yeah. all you know and I do I, I'm the announcer for the thing now I do all the announcing oh great uh, for the films and stuff that's so I get to see everything for free that's but um, oh, man. yeah I do all the announcing and the giveaway prizes sometimes I welcome people to the theater uh, it's so funny because I'm the voice of the silent film festival <laughs> that's <funny. laughs> That's fantastic! Wow. Yeah. Oh, I'm jealous. Because um, I, um, you know, I, I, I like noir films. You know, all the black and white stuff with the cops and the L.A. and the, and uh, the, the whole sleazy, dark side of Los Angeles that you know it's just not too hard to find even today sometimes. And uh, right. again, you know, it's this ethos of uh, of mood and and uh, 
and music uh, that is not accented today uh, the way it was then. And, um, it, you know, it's such an art form, and, and they, they approached it in an artsy manner, no matter what the budget. And we can, we can talk about Ed Woods. And, oh, by the way, uh, some company has bought uh, on Santa Monica Boulevard uh, uh, Ed Woods' um, studio. Uh, and, the, and, uh. the, and the guy's a, a, a film freak, and uh, uh, he wants to re- re- refurbish it just as it was when Ed Woods was there. Are you an Ed Woods fan? <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I thought we refurbish it so people can come in and look at it and see what it looked like. Yeah, or yeah. try to reuse it that way. Uh, no, no, I don't think. He, I think he wants people to come in and, and maybe he'll have a bar involved. But he's going to put everything the way it was, as he, so he promises. But I think there'll be right. there'll be beverages. <laughs> you know, so you can. Uh, well, that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. See, that's that thing that's happening, man, and. Um, uh, you know, you and I can appreciate that. I know that some people don't even know what we're talking about sometimes about this stuff. But, uh, you know, I think it's catching on. I think it's catching on. Uh, so, that you know, the history of L.A. is uh, is, uh, is uh, enmeshed with uh, showbiz. And uh, you being a showbiz person and I uh, uh, involved in showbiz in some ways, in some ways not, uh, uh, can appreciate right. that. Um, it's because uh, the freeways, I think the freeways are not that exciting. Uh, I, you know, I came up here today uh, on the bus, and I was just thinking, oh, God, I don't have to deal with road rage. Um, and that was quite a trip. I took the train. The metro, have, you, have you used a metro rail? Yeah, I don't have a car right now, and I love uh, taking the transit, you know, transit here. Um, Ditto. You know, occasionally you'll find a weird guy on the bus, or it might be something <laughs> uncomfortable. But, you know, then what do you, why, what's the other option? You're avoiding any of that stuff. Well, um, yes. And did. the trains are great. The trains are great. They're fast. Oh, my God. Not, not enough people use them. No. And so uh, clean. But they're, they're adding to the trains. I mean, there's, they're going to be going directly to the airport soon, right? And Yes, yes. There's also, there's another train that they're building out towards Pasadena. There's one that already goes there, but there's one that they're extending past Pasadena, maybe? I can't remember. I don't have the details on my head. Well, you know, some of these routes existed uh, back in the day with the red cars. And uh, yeah. it, they're just kind of like painting by number what they uh, what they took out, and they're putting it back in. <laughs> Where are you from? Oh, I'm from Houston, Texas. I was born in New York City. Uh, I graduated University of Houston uh, with a uh, history English degree. And uh, got bored and uh, said, uh, got my Screen Actors Guild card. And I uh, came out here and got my Screen Actors Guild card and got my Screen Actors Guild card. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I like to look at it sometimes. I'm going to frame yeah. it. I, uh, and you've been paying into it every year. Yes, I've taken a leave of absence, uh, a voluntary leave of absence. Oh, yeah. Until Smart. I, thank you. Uh, Smart. I was so superstitious. I said, God, maybe I'll never get back in again. You know, what if they forget my number or something? <laughs> but I am planning on returning uh, the great return. Um, yeah, I'm always I'm always behind in dues around now, and I never get the screeners for the SAG Awards, and I'm oh. like, I'm all paid up because <laughs> I oh. happen to be doing a few cartoons in December. Fantastic! Um, yeah, so good for you. Yeah, I know you're talking better than getting screeners. You mean you're talking about that when they have the the awards uh, and they send you the stuff? Uh, they either send it to you in the mail. Is that what you're talking about, the DVDs of the of the, of the Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Crop of, uh, I mean, a lot of the movies you don't want to see on a small screen, but um, yeah. Yeah. the other the flip side is that it's free. Sure. A few, a few of them that you don't want to see at all. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then they have the screenings, you know, where you can go out, they give you the tickets, and you walk up to the uh, uh, to the ticket booth and say, I, you know, I'm, I'm a member. And they say, a member of what? <laughs> the SAG. Uh, and that's nice. It really is. And they let you in. And they've, they've done everything to prevent any kind of uh, piracy, too. They, they oh. claim that every DVD is marked with your code, so that if for some reason I let one of these DVDs leak out into the world, they oh. figure it out that I'm, I'm the one that did it. <laughs> that's... And I'd be put in jail for 35 years. No, it, it's like, I think they have, is, that's like Interpol, the CIA, the FBI, and some agencies that we don't even know about will hunt you down. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like that—the uh, uh, the tag on your uh, mattress or your pillowcase. Uh, you know, you, you, you yeah. tear that off and it's over. 
Uh, you know, Ron, this young lady is uh, making strange signals to me, which it's like kind of like the light. Let me tell you, sir, uh, this has been a hoot. And um, I get to call my mom tonight and tell her that, I, you know, I had Ron Lynch on and uh, tell her all about this. <laughs> <laughs> and she'll go, ooh? Yeah, I'll, I'll tell her about uh, Nana the Catwoman. Uh, so I don't know. Thank you so much, Ron. And I, you know, I will be seeing you in the near future, uh, in probably about 72 hours. I, I'll be sure. swing by. And, uh, and please come see my show. Yes, don't forget sir. my show. I shall. Every indeed. Saturday at midnight. Yes, everybody. That's uh, uh, Ron Lynch. And he has a show there at the Steve Allen Theater. Uh, right there uh, on Hollywood uh, bu- uh, uh, Boulevard, right across from the Frank Lloyd Wright uh, Barnsdale House. Uh, midnight, ladies and gentlemen. It's a late show, BYOB, fantastic. And again, thank you so much, Ron, and uh, we'll be talking very sure. soon. Sure. I have no problem. I love to. Thank you, sir. Have fun. Have fun. Thank you. Good night. Okay. Bye. Bye. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we're about to wrap it up, and as. Uh, as uh, you heard, that was Ron Lynch. And uh, again, this is another uh, uh, amazing uh, uh, part of the comedy scene. And uh, uh, we hoped you all enjoyed this. I certainly did. And I hope you uh, got something out of it. Uh, he's incredible. And uh, who knows? You know, we might find some ghosts out there uh, at the Queen Mary or uh, up in the hills up there on Bronson Avenue. Uh, the Bat Cave. Uh, now, this man uh, uh, really helped me out in uh, uh, telling me uh, uh, what improv and sketch ca- comedy is. I, uh, uh, for those of you out there, uh, you know, improv is where the audience uh, gets stuff uh, thrown at them, and you throw it back at the group, and they uh, act it out. And sketch comedy is where you know it's rehearsed and set up. Uh, you can Wikipedia that. <laughs> So anyway, that's it, ladies and gentlemen. This is Alan Lee, and uh, come back. Irreverent, entertaining, cool. You're listening to L.A. Talk Radio. You're listening to Razor Riffs with Keith Razor and Alan Lee right here on LA Talk Radio.